right, good morning. It's great to see everybody this morning. Good morning, Miss Eva. Hope you're having a good morning so far. Um, got my coffee here and um, ready for another day. Just looking at the calendar and realizing today is December 10th. And you know what that means? That, that means it's just a little over two weeks until Christmas, about 15 days until Christmas. And I was just thinking that only gives me about 14 days until I start doing my Christmas shopping. <laughs> uh, the word of the day is procrastination. <laughs> and what's really sad about it is uh, Julie basically does all of the Christmas shopping. The only thing I have to do is, is shop for her. And... Um, I'm not a very good shopper, I must admit, but uh, maybe I can redeem myself before the 25th gets here. I uh, hope you're having a, a, a good week, and uh, I'm sure most of you probably got your Christmas shopping done by now, and uh, 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 you're, you're looking forward to that time with, with joy instead of with fear like I am. Uh, so good morning uh, good morning Tracy good to see y'all this morning all right um, I, if you will take your Bibles let's go ahead and be opening them to, to Job chapter 2 we're going to look at some verses toward the end of that chapter here in just a moment and as we're turning there in our Bibles let me ask you a question do you ever struggle to find the right words to say when you are with somebody who's hurting or grieving. I think we all do. Um, maybe we even avoid those situations because we feel like we don't know what to say. And I, I definitely want to discourage us from avoiding the situation. Uh, our, the people that we love, they need us in those moments. But um, I, we just have such a desire to just to put together some magic words that are going to make it all go away and fix it. And uh, the truth is, there just are no magic words like that. And uh, uh, in reality, the best thing that we can give someone who's hurting is loving presence. That's the, that's the phrase I'd like for us all to have burned into our memories today. Loving presence. Never underestimate the power of, of loving presence. You know, as you reflect on your most difficult times in life, uh, you'll never forget those who came to your side. You'll never forget those who were there with you. When my mom passed away, there were some uh, friends who drove miles, hours, to come and be with us on the day of her funeral. I will never forget those people. Their love uh, blessed me on one of the most difficult days of my life just by being there. I don't remember anything they said that day, but I do remember that they were there, and that's important. I recently read a story about Jen. Jen is a young lady who works at a theme park, and one day she watched as Ralph just collapsed into a pool of tears, and she rushed to help him and uh, you see, Ralph is a, a young boy with autism, and he was sobbing because the ride that he had waited all day to enjoy had broken down. And instead of trying to hurry him to his feet or urging him to feel better, Jen just sat down on the ground beside Ralph and put her arm around him. She validated his feelings, and she just gave him the time to cry and sat there with him uh, as he did. We can see a similar reaction in the initial attempt of Job's friends to help him. I, I do not have the words to describe what Job faced and what he went through when he lost all of his possessions in one day, when all ten of his children were killed in one day, and then he was afflicted with boils, disease, from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. His wife, uh, she also was grief-stricken, and she uh, cried out to him to, to curse God and die. He was alone. He was grieving. 
He was suffering in agony, and he spiritually, too, was searching for understanding and trying to figure out why this had all happened and why, why did God allow it to happen. Job had three friends, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar, who came to him during this time. In Job chapter 2, beginning in verse 11, the Bible says that when Job's three friends heard of all the adversity that had come upon him, each one came from his own place, Eliphaz the Temanite, Bildad the Shuhite, and Zophar the Naamathite. For they had made an appointment together to come and mourn with him. Notice that phrase, mourn with him and to comfort him. When they raised their eyes from afar, they did not recognize him. They lifted up their voices and wept, and each one tore his robe and sprinkled dust on his head toward heaven. And they sat down with him, with him, on the ground seven days and seven nights. No one spoke a word to him, for they saw that his grief was very great. This is the best thing that Job's friends could have done for him. They, they didn't avoid him. They made an appointment to, to get together and come to him. And at first they came with the intention to just mourn with him. The Bible tells us to weep with those who weep, and that's what they intended to do. And for seven days even, they, they couldn't bear to speak a word. They just sat with Job and, and mourned with him over the the loss that he had suffered. And just their presence, without saying a word, conveyed their love for Job. And, and you know, love is the only medicine that can soften the blow of grief and sadness. There's nothing that can make it go away. Um, they say that time heals all wounds. Well, when it comes to grief, maybe with time things do get better or easier, but... Uh, it's not realistic to think that, that grief is never going to be a factor in a person's life once you've lost someone that was that important to you. But love can soften the blow, and it can help. Sadly, after those uh, first seven days, Job's friends became impatient, like the rest of us. So, something had to be said, and and what they said could not have been worse. They began to blurt out judgments against Job, and, and they began to offer him unfounded advice. Uh, to me, one of the, the, the harshest things that is said is found in, in chapter 8. Uh, this is uh, Bildad, and you, as you read through this book, it, it alternates. With one of the friends will speak, and Job will speak, and then it just keeps going back and forth. This was one of the times that, that Bildad spoke. Notice what he says in verse 4. If your sons have sinned against him, he has cast them away for their transgression. Man, that must have cut to the quick when Job heard that. Bildad's basically saying, Job, who are you to argue with God? If he killed your sons, seven of them, it's because they were sinners. And they deserve to die. Man, that, that's like taking Job's heart and just throwing it on the ground and stomping on it. And um, I can't imagine. This, this is only intensifying the pain that Job was already feeling. In verse 5, he says, If you earnestly seek God and make your supplication to the Almighty, if you were pure and upright, surely now... He would awake for you and prosper your rightful dwelling place. In other words, you must have done something bad, Job, to deserve all of this. And if you'll just repent of it, God will, will uh, change his mind and he'll bless you. Well, that was completely false. But sometimes we think we know everything when we really don't. We, we think we know what God is doing when we really don't. And we shouldn't really speak about things that we don't know. What do we know? We know we love this person. We know that we will be with there with them as long as they need us to be. That's what we know. And that's what we communicate. 
We don't judge them for the feelings that they're having. We don't pretend to have all of the answers. We just offer them the power of loving presence. This impulsiveness ruined the good that they had done for Job in those first seven days. And later on, God rebuked them for making such hasty judgments in Job 42, 7 and 8. So my encouragement to us today is to realize that generally the best thing we can do is to just come alongside those who are grieving or suffering. And you know, as I said, being two weeks before Christmas, I think this is a perfect time for us to have a lesson like this. As you know, the holidays can be so difficult for people who are grieving, those who are sad and those who deal with depression. Uh, what, is, what is generally such a happy time for most people can be very painful and very difficult. So if we know of people that uh, are having a difficult time during the holidays, now's a good time to go pay them a visit. Or uh, if you're not able to visit in person, give them a call, uh, uh, text them or send them a card and just reach out to them uh, and, and let them know that you are present with them in heart and in mind. And um, just, just to convey to people that we're there to help in any way we can help, we will pray with them and for them. We're ready to listen uh, with, with compassion and understanding. We're just there to love them and weep with them uh, and help in any way we can. But as we do that, let's be sure that we keep ourselves from jumping to conclusions or making hasty judgment or even giving hasty advice. Just be present, be compassionate, be helpful, and let God's providence do the rest. Let's bow together and pray. Oh Lord, we come before you today to praise you, to express our love and our thankfulness. Lord, you have given us life. You have filled our lives with so many good things. And most of all, we're thankful for your son, Jesus, and the salvation that we have through his death on the cross and the hope that that gives us for eternity. Lord, we are thankful today for your loving presence. You have promised that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And that gives us such peace and comfort just to know that you are near. And as your children, Father, help us to share that gift with others around us, especially those who are hurting during this holiday season. Help us, Father, to, to share the medicine that is loving presence. And help us, Father, to look for ways that we can be helpful, that we can be encouraging, that we can show our love, or even to weep with those who, who need to weep. Father, please comfort us in our struggles and use us to help comfort others as we have need. We recognize that the greatest purpose for which we can live is to love you with all of our heart and love each other as we love ourselves. There's no greater gift that we can give to people than to share that love and kindness. So we pray that your love will fill our hearts and flow through us to others that they might know you, and that they might be closer to you as well. We continue our prayer for those who are sick, and those who are struggling, and praying, Lord, that you will continue to keep them in the palm, uh, palm of your hand. And Lord, please forgive us of our sins. And help us today as we strive to be faithful always to your will. Help us to be fervent in our work and we pray that you will bless us with increase. Lord, please continue to go with us and keep us always in your loving care. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And um, just want to say also how much I appreciate all the sweet comments. Uh, voicemails and, and messages that I, I've gotten and uh, it's such an encouragement to me to keep going with this and so I do appreciate it very much and uh, hopefully we can continue just to encourage each other all the way to heaven. I hope you have a great day, a great weekend and look forward to seeing everybody hopefully on Sunday. Till then, God bless. Love you all.